Hello, my name is Norbert Engelbert. I'm a member of the Catlin CVU Survey Debrief Team. In this lecture, I will give you a brief introduction to, to the various types of substrate you will need to be able to identify to complete task two of your final project. We can divide all of the substrate classes into two broad categories. There are biotic components, which are all the living components of the substrate, including hard corals, soft corals, plus sponges and microalgae, or seaweed. There are, of course, abiotic components, such as rubble, sand, and bare substrate. So let's begin by looking at the biotic components, starting with the hard corals. Uh, this group of corals has six tentacles, giving it the scientific name Hexacorelia. Uh, although there are hundreds of species of hard coral, many of them are very difficult to tell apart, even for a professional marine biologist. Uh, a way to simplify uh, this complexity is to classify the types of corals based on their shapes, which we call life forms. For your final project, there are seven different life forms of hard coral that you will need to be able to recognize. The first is the branching corals, which are the ones you can see here in the images. Branching corals are one of the groups that contribute most to, um, to building the three-dimensional structure of coral reefs. As the name says, they're recognizable by their branches, which, like tree branches, might divide many times. The next life form is called digitate. Although at first they can look similar to branching corals, the difference is that digitate corals do not divide more than once or twice. Branching corals are often a mass of tangled branches, but with digitate corals you can usually see right through the base, like in this picture. As you can see, massive and submassive corals are very different to the branching and digitate life forms. They have a wide range of shapes, uh, but all have a solid structure, often which can look like a football or even a uh, deflated balloon. Some species with this life form can achieve enormous sizes and live for many hundreds of years. The brain coral life form is a variation on the massive submassive life form. If you look at the picture, it should be pretty obvious how they get their name, as the intricate an intertwined labyrinth of grooves that runs across their uh, surface looks like the surface of a brain. In contrast to the life forms you've seen so far, the least three life forms are all flat shapes. First we have plate corals, like this Pifona species you can see here. Plate corals form laminar surfaces which are good for capturing light, and some of them grow deep down the reef wall where conditions are dark. If you look at the photo, you can clearly see the edge of the colony where it forms a rim like a plate. Next we have folio corals, whose colonies form thin sheets. A good way to remember the name is to think of the word foliage, like the leaves of a bush. The colony's walls are thin and leaf-like and usually stand upright towards the sea surface. The last of our coral life forms is called encrusting, as the colony forms a crust on the reef. Unlike plate corals, they do not have a rim like a plate, but tend instead to adhere closely to the substrate and form uh, a thin veneer. Now we move on to the soft corals. Earlier I mentioned that the hard corals have six tentacles and belong to the group Hexacorelia. Well, as you learned in week one, the soft corals all have eight tentacles, and so they are called Octocorelia. Again, there are many species of soft corals and they are extremely difficult to tell apart. But for your final project, you will only have to identify them as being soft corals. With a little practice, soft corals are quite easy to distinguish from hard corals and they often have like a leathery or rubbery appearance. Some of them look like old fashioned fans or like even broccoli or feathers. If you compare the image at the top right here with the image of the encrusting hard coral shown on the previous slide, it will help you to train your eye to tell the difference between the two groups. Sponges belong to the phylum Porifera and they are one of the oldest forms of life on Earth. Uh, like most of the corals, sponges are actually colonies of many individuals living together. Sponges come in a wide variety of shapes, sizes and colors 
but they all have holes uh, through which they suck seawater as they fill their feet on small, small particles suspended in the water. Now we turn to the macroalgae or seaweeds. All of the world's seaweeds can be classified into three groups based on their pigmentation, red, brown or green algae. It can be challenging to accurately identify the colors from underwater photographs as the water changes the color composition of the light. So we'll simply call them all macroalgae. Many macroalgae bloom seasonally and the proportion of the substrate they cover can vary dramatically over the course of a year as light and temperature fluctuate up and down. In images you can see some of the most common macroalgae that you're likely to see in your project photo set. Finally we have the abiotic substrate classes. These are pretty self-explanatory but make sure you take a good look at the images. Rubble is old bits of coral that have broken off and are now lying on the seabed. Um, most rubble is made from branching or digitate corals which can break easily as a result of storms. As we discussed in week 3, uh, reef sand is made of calcium carbonate and comes from a wide variety of sources such as shells of tiny plankton or eroded from the substrate by grazers like uh, sea urchins or parrotfish. The third abiotic substrate, substrate class is simply bare substrate or coral rock. In reality, this is rarely completely bare and is usually covered in a fine layer of turf algae, which is an important food source for many reef grazers. And that's the end of the lecture. Go back and review the different substrate classes until you're happy you know the differences. And if you're unsure of something, go on to the weekly discussion board and see if anyone else has the same question or even pose a new question yourself. During your project, you also have a virtual underwater slate that you can use to look up the various classes whenever you are unsure. Well, good luck, all of us here at Tropic 101X. Hope you enjoy the project and start to get a feel for what it's like to be a marine biologist conducting an underwater survey program.